From Studio C in the 511 Studios, located in the Brewery District in downtown Columbus, Ohio, this is Note to Future Me. Hi, I'm Brett Johnson, your host and owner of Circle 270 Media Podcast Consultants. In this episode, I talk to Dr. Carol Ventresca. She is the Executive Director at Employment for Seniors. Now, I've been working with Employment for Seniors now for about 15 years, and About three years ago, we started a podcast called the Successful Encore Career Podcast. And with that podcast, we wanted to showcase what Employment for Seniors does do, as well as how the nonprofit is successfully helping older adults, those over 50, transition into a a, a great encore career. So it has multiple levels of what we are doing with the podcast, and I thought it was really good time to be talking to Carol about how the podcast has evolved, has affected our clients, has affected the nonprofit itself, and where it's going. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you can take some notes from it as a nonprofit. I think uh, nonprofits should be jumping into podcasts like crazy. It's very easy and economical and a, a, a really a fun way to showcase what you're doing as a nonprofit. But uh, I hope this episode will help you get started or uh, refine what you're doing with a nonprofit. And thanks for taking notes with me. Well, Carol, thanks for being a part of this podcast. I appreciate it. I've been wanting to do this with you for a long time. It just it's syncing up schedule and me remembering to ask <laughs> you there to be a go. part of this. So, uh, well, Dr. thank you for having me. Yeah. So let's talk about employment for seniors a little bit. Get a little, little, okay. little prop. I think that sets the table on why I'm, I wanted you here for this podcast to talk about a nonprofit doing a podcast. Okay. Employment for seniors is a um, 47-year-old nonprofit in central Ohio. So we are serving mature job seekers who we consider to be 50 years of age and older in Franklin County and the surrounding county. So it's a seven-county area. We provide services to those looking for employment free of charge. And we also provide some services to local employers, including job postings free of charge. Then we also have hiring events for employers, and there are slight charges for those. But we've been doing this for 47 years. The um, uniqueness of employment for seniors is that anybody is eligible for our services as long as they're at least 50. We don't do income eligibility. We don't collect Social Security numbers. We just want to make sure that we can help people become the best possible candidate they can be through resources and guidance and direction and those job postings. And for employers, we're trying to enhance their um, applicant pool um, so that they have a diverse full pool that includes age, old, those who are older. Um, and they're not missing out on any, the incredible resources, skills, and talent that a mature job seeker is going to bring to them. So, um, again, the only thing that a client needs to do to uh, register with us is to call the office, which is 614-863-1219, to make an appointment, and um, we'll get you started. Yeah. What's your background in history before coming um, to employment for seniors? Uh, it, it, it's sort of a... An, an, an array of things which are all peripherally uh, employment related, but I'm not a career, uh, a licensed career counselor. Mm-hmm. I've been doing career counseling for over 30 years. Um, I started out in the workforce uh, with the state of Ohio at the Bureau of Employment Services. And um, when I finished my PhD at Ohio State, I went back to Ohio State and did continuing education programs for older adult students for uh, almost 20 years. And um, I was um, able to see the need of older adults needing to, to do that expand that lifelong learning going back to school to make their job search and their career path better. So that's sort of where I started focusing on those issues. I had also, as a grad student, been an academic advisor and a career advisor. I have been placing students on internships. I still help place students on internships, you know, 40 years later. Um, so as a, again, I'm not a licensed career counselor, but I've been doing career counseling for a long time. And I've been in employment for seniors for over 10 years now. 
Yeah, it's a, that's right. I know. Yeah, it's amazing. Time flies. time flies when you're having fun. Exactly. And we do have fun every day. That's that's the one thing about this job that I love. So I'm learning something new and I'm having fun every day. Well, there's a lot of seriousness to the job. Oh, you yeah. Know, you hear the stories <laughs> yeah. from the gamut. Yes. Um, and and you, you don't want to dread coming in. <laughs> well, and I think, too, the message that I would have if anyone who's listening today is a job seeker is it doesn't matter that the front page of the paper says the economy is great. There is still a lot of difficulty in getting a job in today's market, particularly for those who haven't looked for a job for a long time. The application process is very different. And without some guidance, you're out there um, just, you know, pound on the pavement or pounding your fingers on a keyboard and getting nowhere fast. And and that's very frustrating. National Statistics are still showing that those who are even actually over 45 are having a harder time finding a job. And um, for those over, you know, into their late 50s and 60s, it could take two years to find a job comparable to what they had before. Right. Well, full disclosure before we walk into the, the, the nuts and bolts of your podcast, the podcast of Employment for Seniors Successful Encore Career Podcast is that I I was personally at the very beginning of that helped bring the idea together. I co-host a lot of the, the podcasts, or at least I'm there being All a part of, of it, being a part of it. You are it the guilty way. party in this conversation. There you go. Yes. So I kind of want to lay that groundwork ahead of time, but my point in not necessarily promoting some podcasts that I am a part of is that I love the story behind what the podcast has done for the nonprofit. And I think it's a good story that a lot of nonprofits, I hope, can take note yes. and learn from that it's very possible to do. Um, and beginning with that, so let's talk about the process that we began, you know, discussing a podcast, how that um, began and, and where it, it's obviously today. Um, I think it's a good story. You can tell the story <laughs> of how it yes, began, actually. For, for listeners, um, Brett walked into my office and said, oh, yeah, by the way, I've started a podcast for you, and I've called it the Successful Encore Career Podcast. And my question to him is, what's a podcast? <laughs> Um, so, uh, he sort of caught me by surprise and I kept trying to push it off thinking, oh God, not one more thing on my list of things to do. But, um, it really revolved around to um, our move. Our office mm-hmm. had to move and we were in a situation which was fine in terms of client services, but we couldn't expand and we would never have been able to pull off a podcast in that situation. So, um, finding new space really Gave it birth. Right. I, I think the, the story behind that is kind of taking a look at where you are, the, the physical space. Is there space that can be utilized um, that's off the beaten path that has some quietness to it mm-hmm. that can be not necessarily 100% dedicated to creating, right. whether it's a podcast, video cast, whatever it might be, but it, media content. Let's put it that way. Right. If you have that space that can be utilized on a consistent basis, why not? And I know mm-hmm. we toured – Three or four different office spaces. Oh, you did yeah. more than I did, but right. I was in, I was involved with a few places to take a look at. And when we found the location that we did and that we are right now, I saw the room that we were going to use for a conference room and training room as well. And it caught my eye going, this could work. A- it, absolutely. And uh, let me also preface to say we didn't move because we were looking for podcast space. We no. moved because we had to. Right. Our building had been sold. And so we, ha- we had to find new space. And we had intended to find – some conference room or meeting room space if it would work out. And um, when we walked into our present location, which is the First Commonwealth Bank mm-hmm. building in, in Whitehall, it was perfect. It was perfect size, perfect exactly what we needed. And we really wanted to have a, a, a designated training area, meeting area, which we can convert into podcasting mm-hmm. in literally five minutes. So, yeah. and, and then discussion did take a while you know, between obviously the, the pains and, and gains of moving – but also realizing that room could be used multi-purpose. I mean, and, and mm-hmm. we we had the discussions of looking at that room as okay, we, we use it as a conference room, but we also can use it for this. We can use it th- for this. We can also offer it to the community as a room to do this as exactly. well to as partner. That if they need something quote unquote off campus to have a meeting in this conference room, or if they want to create a video cast or a podcast, let's open it up to them right. and have discussions. Right. Uh, and and serve the local community, right. the Whitehall community, which is a, an incredible partner of ours and, and their small businesses or large businesses. But um, I think, too, that to think about podcasting as a training tool 
with something new. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, uh, it people use podcasts to get trained, but I don't know that organizations have thought of podcasting as a training tool. They're doing webinars, they're doing Skype and all of those other kinds of things. But when we talked about podcasting, we started out with this notion of telling stories about clients who have gone through successful encore career changes. But why not also as um, that place that people could go to forever and get information mm-hmm. on a particular job search topic. All right. And uh, that dawned on me looking and just literally coming in the office one day and seeing these sheets of frequently asked questions. Right. Or these these Our tip cool sheets. tip mm-hmm. sheets that you give clients as they walk out. Well, each one of those tips are a podcast. Right. Because you, you dive in deep into what this means to network, mm-hmm. what this means to even just put a photo on a LinkedIn page. It, it really is a prime example of using the resources you have and just expanding them right. because those were I, – I mean it's taken us years to put those tip sheets together and we have, what, 20 of them or so. Right. Um, and they're critical information and we've always had those tip sheets available on the website, but it's a PDF. It's a flat file. Mm-hmm. Now we actually have voices connected to that information with further explanation. Yeah, and easily for the, the – the counselors to mention, hey, we also have a podcast expanding on sure. this. I only have 30 to 35 minutes with you today until our follow up or whatever, whatever next steps you are going to take. But we have this library of podcasts. You can, we talk to so and so expert about this. We talk to so and so expert mm-hmm. about this, or we're bringing this one topic to life to listen to a little bit more than just a couple of sentences here. Um, and I think, too, it is an, it's another example that I can give to an employer who says older adults don't know anything about technology because guess what? We're using podcasting. We, as older adults, are creating a technology podcast, but also our clients as older adults are using them. So we are not only utilizing the resources we have, one of the things that we do is to send out emails, mass emails to clients, and we are including podcast highlights in those emails. Um, When we're doing our hiring event, which I think we're going to talk a little bit more Mm -hmm. about later, we're doing podcasts with those employers. So it's a huge uh, circle that we have created of enhancing the information that we give to our clients in a lot of different ways, including using technology. Um, Also, as an aside, um, when I gave testimony to our county commissioners earlier this year, uh, as opposed to inundating them with paper, I gave them a jump drive and said, yes, we know how to use technology. And by the way, here is my presentation and some of our podcasts on each of these jump drives for you. And so they got a chuckle out of it, if nothing else. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and that leads me to the next comment and question. I mean, some factors that we discussed in measuring you know, the success, the failure of what I term return on influence, not just the, you know, the ROI, return on investment. Yes, there is investment, of course, with this, a little bit of money. We can, we'll, we'll touch upon that as we move on to the podcast. But I think that our influence, our success has been huge in regards to creating this podcast. But number one, we get that look of like, you have a podcast. Right. Oh, Yes. That, the other the other nonprofits just like stare and go, what? Well, and it, and it ups <laughs> just, your professional game by having one because right. you do take the time to create one. Mm-hmm. And it represents the right. organization very well. And, and we've covered and continue to cover the topics that are core to our mission, our vision, as well as helping our, you know, it, it moves our clients forward, we hope. Right. Well, it, and it's interesting, too, and I was thinking about this topic about ROI. I mean, it, for us, it's almost not measurable yes. because there's no cost to it. Other than the outlay of the original equipment, we are going into our third year and and have – so far, it's been free, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, your time, my time, our guest time, but in that time, that sort of goodwill that we're building, it is – strengthening our brand. Mm -hmm. And um, I think maybe that's one of the keys here is do what you know. Maybe that's a lesson in in creating a podcast is uh, I didn't know the technology, but I knew the career part. Mm -hmm. You knew the technology and are learning the career part with me. But we 
we are doing what we know. And so the ROI, I think, is huge, but it's more it's it's not um, numbers. There are numbers. We are, we have sponsors, so there isn't dollars connected to it um, in terms of enhancing what we're doing. But it it really is much more of a, um, a, a the 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 amount of goodwill that we're creating because we are allowing others to succeed with us and and increase their brand. Mm-hmm. So we yes we we have a huge effort in creating our and enhancing our own brand, but those that we bring with us, we're enhancing theirs too. Well, and it gives us the opportunity to talk to those that are experts in their field too. We have a whole series on right. LinkedIn and what to do with LinkedIn. And yes, other forms of content creation could have brought her to the table of mm-hmm. maybe co-writing a blog, mm-hmm. um, maybe doing a video series, maybe. But the comfort level that this podcast has created for us asking experts in their field to come in and talk about very specific pieces rather than just hearing us talk about it. Oh, right. Bringing someone in that knows about LinkedIn, knows about networking has been fantastic. It's been enlightening and and our world of contacts and HR have helped too to, to, to give our listener, our potential client or current client, a better view of what the reality is. Right. Of of looking for a job and how to approach it. And it's enhanced the agency by tapping our volunteers who are incredible HR professionals to um, not just give information to um, clients but to build their own resume of skills. And it's also helped our board members – with uh, promoting their agencies and their industries. So I guess, too, along with um, do what you know is to make it a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, who we're targeting with the podcast. Initially, you know, we – I know it was the target of our clients to help them, you know – the name of it, the successful encore career, was to bring a lot of you know, try to bring in these these folks that are over fifty, maybe over forty five, and have have done the turn, have whether been let go or they saw another career path, and they've grabbed the horns and they did it. and And because there are some nuances to that adult over fifty that are different than the twenty five year old doing the mm-hmm. same thing, mm-hmm. so we wanted to spotlight that. But it turned into more than that. Oh, it has, um, and. The um, it's to only do encore to only do encore career changes, which are phenomenal. Right. And and it, it, I just mentioned we wanted to do work stories. We wanted people to talk about their career stories, but to not do the other things would I mean we get tired of just doing career right. stories. So we really have three themes. One of which is that notion of the career changer. How to successfully career change. But then we've done the second theme, which is how to be a great applicant. Mm -hmm. And that's where all of our tips are coming in. Um, Talk about adding ROI. We supported uh, Congressman Stiver's veterans job fair last year and then created four or five podcasts off of that event and did it and and posted those through November Veterans Month. Um, So there, but it's all tips on how to really be a good job seeker. Um, folks have acted like job seeking is a very informal process, and it's not. So that's where we're at. We want you to be a good job seeker, and we're going to give you the formal tips on how to do it. But what we didn't think was going to happen, and a real surprise, is all of this work we're doing with employers. And, oh, my gosh, that has just bloomed and has been um, great fun and, and a wonderful benefit that we can give to employers who are coming to us with the jobs they have to right. fill. Yeah, let's let's dig into that a little bit more. Okay. Uh, we're kind of actually doing it almost twofold yes. in two different realms. And, and let's talk about the hiring events, let's okay. how, how we're doing that. So it started where we we were highlighting the employers who are coming to the career fair. And so we've already done two, and we're going to do our third career fair this year doing the live stream. So although you've gotten me into this mess, um, this is um, your payback <laughs> is to sit for four hours and talk to people through the, through the career fair. So it started there. 
um, where we really started uh, tapping into the employers and highlighting them. Then we created, because of our new space, we have the ability to have on-site hiring events at the Employment for Seniors office. And this came not just because we had the space, but also because employers loved the career fair and they wanted us to do it more than once a year, which would be literally impossible. It takes us six to nine months to pull that together, and there's no way we could pull two of them off. But we also realized they needed an opportunity to do more hiring um, at more logical times of the year, not just once a year, and um, based on their hiring needs. Um, but also, over and above everything, this it is a, a service to employers, but the hardest part of a job search is getting your foot in the door for an interview. Um, how many times do clients fill out an online application and they never hear from the employer? They really just want to be able to tell their story to that employer. So by doing those on-site hiring events, the employer is there ready to talk to them. It may only be a 10-minute interview, but it's it could be critical. So we have one tomorrow, and we have 50 people registered. Mm-hmm. And they have gone usually from 10 to 30, so we're really interested to see how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be a madhouse. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> sure. We're, hope we're, we're ready. Yeah. So we um, preface this these hiring events with a podcast. From right. from the employer uh, and and it's like my and, long-winded story. No, no. Time. Well, and to go into why we are talking to these employers about their uh, business is it's part of again the the research tool that we exactly p- continue to harp on our clients. Research the business that you want to go interview with. Exactly. See if it's a match for you. See what they're all about. And we hope that these interviews with the cl- with the, with the businesses will give them a little insight about what they're. What, what their business is like. Right. That they well, have some what common culture, ground to talk. The right. culture is what they, they just what? dropping. I, I know what you do this, but hey, I heard the podcast. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Exactly. Um, it, it's it's finding out what the culture is like, not just the names of the jobs. The title of the job is going to tell you anything. Mm-hmm. And even the position description may not tell you anything. But the opportunity to hear that employer's voice and to really get an a, just of what are they expecting? What are their assumptions on a, a great candidate? You know, what what kinds of skills are, are, are we looking for? Position descriptions can be very vague or they can be very misleading. So the more you find out about that employer and and their expectations, um, the better you're going to be prepared to to for to do a good interview. Um, so and and this is ROI for the employer. They are they are we're charging them a fee to have this event at our office. Um, and but we are giving them this benefit of literally worldwide information about their company. Right, and we push it through our social media streams. We also give them uh, a, a short hood uh, bitly link to uh, to the podcast itself too that actually goes to uh, our, our podcast platform. So we're really not necessarily promoting come back to our website, but it's easy access. It's, it's It really is always focused about the client. Yes, we like to have the traffic to the website, of course, but we also know that our traffic to our website is pretty darn good anyway. Right. The podcast obviously lends toward it, but I think if we continue that – that focus on making sure the client has easy access to this information, we will win. And we do win. Well, and I, I, I like the first question that you ask them is, why do you work for this company? Yeah. I mean, if you can hear why a recruiter works for a company, you're really going to get an idea of what to expect when you walk in the door as a new employee. Right. Yeah. So. I, I asked that of one employer, and I've told you this story before too, but I, I thought it was an interesting answer that this young lady liked working there because of – Casual Fridays that they had just – and it's <laughs> right. a very old established business, okay? And you would probably think it's kind of stodgy there, I guess, but that she thought it was the coolest thing that they implemented in casual Fridays or at least bring back the, the, the dress code. But I thought that was an interesting answer because there could be someone in their 50s or 60s that all their life, suit and tie, suit and tie, mm-hmm. and they are very uncomfortable with casual Fridays, they may not want to work there. Right. Or they may be excited because, oh, thank goodness, I don't have to wear a suit again. Maybe. You At know, least one for one day other, a week. You know a little bit of information mm-hmm. before going into that. Right. 
that hopefully helps you make a decision as, as the process goes along. Right, right. Yeah, and yeah. and I it, it again, we if we focus on the podcast to be win-win for our clients, for the guest, for the agency overall, you're going to hit a good sweet spot. Mm-hmm. You're you're really going to have great information out there that's going to last a while. Right. So Let's go into talking about our recording schedule, our strategy, our process of even uh, finding guests. Um, we don't just throw this on the wall and see what sticks. And, no. and, mm-hmm. and, and I, I would advise, again, this is a piece of the success of how this is going on. Um, it's not on, all on my shoulders. It's not all on Carol's shoulders. Actually, we have two or three other people that do some input in regards to topics. We open it up to the the counselor, the volunteer counselors, too. It's like, hey, any topics that you want covered that we're not covering or you're hearing uh, clients coming in talking more about that we haven't, please tell us and we'll, we'll cover that as well, too. Um, but let's talk a little bit about how we do it. Right. Well, and I, and I have to say that starting with our tip sheets was phenomenal mm-hmm. because, again, we have 20 tip sheets, so resume writing, interviewing skills, job fair strategies, that kind of thing. And we haven't even gone through all 20. So we we have a bank of ideas that are out there that we can use. But we have also kept a list. So I, I keep a master list of um, who we have talk to what the topic is, who's been included when it's posted, so and c- sort of what stream of thought it falls in. But um, since we created this, we have had a list of ideas. Um, for the most part, we have always had a content expert. We don't want it to be just us. Right. Um, but there are a few topics that I can't haven't found a content expert, so it's still on my list. So um, I, I mentioned just a bit ago, I would love to find someone who can talk about the nuances of position descriptions. Uh, job seekers always assume that an expert has written the position description. They had no clue that it was the secretary or receptionist who wrote the position description has no idea what that job really does. Mm. So somebody to really get people thinking about how to read between the lines of a position description. I may be the only one who sees that issue. So it may end up being me as the content <laughs> expert at some point in time. I don't know. From the eyes of Carol. From the <laughs> eyes of Carol. Yes. And an example is, what does it mean to be an expert in Microsoft Office? Does that mean that you have to be an expert in Word or you just literally need to know how to type? Or do you have to know how to do pivot tables in Excel? I mean, that's one extreme to the other kind mm-hmm. of thing. So uh, those are those are the kinds of things. But but – so it's kind of twofold. You, again, do what you know, but start sort of exploring and expanding. We have recently started a new series within our series called What What Is It Like to Work In? Dot, dot, dot. Our first one was just posted on logistics. It was phenomenal, yeah. absolutely phenomenal, and sort of a shout out to Jill. She did a great job. Um, it was just posted. It's up there on our site. And it truly opened my eyes on what logistics was. It is not magic. Truly, it's not magic. It is something that people can work in. You don't have to be 20 and a Twitter expert to do logistics. Oh, in terms of scheduling, mm-hmm. um, we sort of do it in batches. We, right. we come up with what are the next logical topics that we can go into. Um, maybe it has to do with the season or the time of the year or it's before expo or whatever and get those scheduled so that we're ahead. Um, you don't ever want to be where, oh, my gosh, I have nothing to post and it's going to be a month since I've posted kind right. of thing. So. Right. And couple that with experts that you know that you can interview, mm-hmm. which is a great networking opportunity that can right. be board members. It could be just professionals in the field, uh, companies that you're working with already. All nonprofits work with businesses. Mm-hmm. I don't care what nonprofit you are. You are dealing with a business, and for some reason they're tied in with you. There's an opportunity to talk to them about something, whether it's why because they're, they're why they're there with you as a nonprofit supporter or a piece of your mission or vision. And such. Exactly. So I, I, um, we've done that too. We've taken a look at topics and, and say, yeah, we can talk about LinkedIn, but you know what? We have a person that can talk about that even better than we can right? because she deals right. with LinkedIn all the time. And this is a topic we really want to stress because we know our clients really aren't doing a lot with LinkedIn. So let's, I think we created a series of three mm-hmm. about LinkedIn. Right. Uh, we've created series on resumes. 
and talking to different points of view on resumes. Right. Well, and I think, too, again, it, it I really look at this as it's not just a, a podcast that's existing by itself. That what are the other kinds of things we can do with it? For years at our Career Expo, this is new, so this is – I just decided this today. So okay. this is news for you. <laughs> for years at our Career Expo, we had a panel called um, – what do what are what do employers want? And it was a group of employers talking about who, what kinds of jobs they had open and what they, their expectations were on, on uh, candidates and, and skills and all of that kind of thing. We had a phenomenal podcast with five members of our board who are HR experts that um, talked about be the candidate an employer needs, sort of being in the right place at the mm-hmm. right time for the right job. And it was amazing. So we're going to change our nice. career expo panel mm-hmm. to be an extension of that. Right. So we'll be able to, again, utilize the podcast, get people listening to it, come to that panel with questions. So I, I think it'll be a great way to better serve the mm-hmm. participants who come to our, our career fair. So, right. So – Anybody that's done any kind of research about doing a podcast, they've probably run across the – how do people find out about us doing the podcast? How do you promote it? And that was a discussion we came with about this as well too and I, I work with all my clients as well about this. And and so we really you know, didn't have a budget to, to really buy social media, to buy ads and such, and it, which is a direction to go of course. So, you know, we took a look at, okay, we have social media at our tips. We can utilize this. We really probably have been underutilizing social media because we didn't have much content to put on social media other than our events. Right. And the strategy behind social media is you just can't plop it up there and expect the world to go crazy because, oh, oh hey, I've been waiting for you guys to post something on LinkedIn forever. Thank goodness you did. The podcast really helped us consistently post information on on social media. Mm -hmm. Our discussions, though, were which social media channel to work with. Right. And we knew there were probably three logical ones, and Facebook has been pretty good for us. I mean, because it hits a couple of different audiences Mm -hmm. with events as well as anything important that's going on that has to do with our clients. Um, but we knew we had to dive into LinkedIn a little bit more too. And, and let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, in your mind too, why we chose those two to really go with. Right. Well, and, and Facebook, because some of our events are more Facebook events right. like our 5K. Um, I don't know that that's so the appropriate for LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is huge for us. Mm-hmm. And um, we have a great following on LinkedIn, both my own page and, and the Employment for Seniors page. We um, LinkedIn is the business social media. That's where people learn about jobs. So how could that not be, right. you know, our our connector? So we're really looking at how we look at LinkedIn and Facebook two ways, feeding into it, feeding out of it. Um, so the podcasts are perfect. Um, if If clients have questions, if they're asking us for things, kind of stirs the podcast pot and, and can we somehow do it um, – satisfy their need there or um, get those that podcast information into the social media. So again, it is. It, it's enhancing our brand right. and letting people know um, that this information is there. The, the beauty, too, of social media and the podcast program is, yes, our target audience are mature job seekers, but everything we're putting on there is really good for any job seeker. And uh, shout out to uh, being on the uh, top 100 employment podcast programs for this mm-hmm. year. So that I guess we made that platform. Yeah. So. Oh, sure. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's what has made uh, the content so easy to do, really, is that we, we do keep in mind, yes, this is – we're going for an older adult with this, obviously. But really, everything we're talking about is true to really almost every age. It it is because job searching is is there's some definites you have to do in it's job, job searching. In it doesn't itself. yeah it, right. exactly and yeah. and it it makes sense for all ages. It also makes sense for all geographic locations. And if we're talking about a resource in Central Ohio, we try to give 
um, other listeners an idea of where to go for that resource in their community. Um, because there is only one employment for seniors, you know, there, mm. but there are other programs that support older workers across the country. Um, so we, we can, you know, provide them with that information. The other part of all of this too is, as I mentioned, we do mass emails to our clients. We have about 5,500 people on our email list who are are regularly getting information from us. So we're using that as a vehicle to also enhance the knowledge of the podcast program as well as our our other programs. Right. So we really weren't using – well, we weren't introducing any new social media to this. It just enhanced – the content that we could put on social media. Right. And I, right. I think that is probably the healthiest way without just over inundating you going, okay, I don't know about this. I don't know this. Use what you're already using. Right. And, and let the podcast give you more content. Right. Because, it, you know, for those listeners thinking about doing a podcast and you're a small nonprofit, you can't get any smaller than Employment for Seniors. We do not have a social media marketing expert on our staff. There are three of us. We work part-time. We are serving anywhere from 500 to 1,000 new clients a year, plus, as I mentioned, 5,500 on our current client list, um, and posting anywhere from 800 to 1,000 jobs a year. So we're already pretty busy over and above any marketing of any of our programs. In the hiring events I mentioned, we're doing, we did 12 last year. We're going to have at least 12 this year. Um, The career fair plus two other large um, fundraising programs uh, or events that we have, there's not a lot of time to do social media out there. So this just was a a blessing in disguise and and uh, an answer to prayers of like how in the world I don't have even five minutes to spend on LinkedIn and and Facebook every day. In terms of other opportunities, we do use Twitter, kind of, um, more as feeding information than than actually reacting. Um, in terms of the other social media platforms. We're not finding our clients there. Um, um, we could do Instagram. We could do all those others. But it's I, I think we have had success in what we're using. And when I see that the others, that we absolutely have to be on the others, then, you know, then we'll go there. All right. Exactly. Um, we, we utilize uh, the, the hosting platform Podbean. And I know that that comes up a lot in regards to what, what platform, how do I, okay, I've created the audio how do I get it into iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever it might be? Um, you, you threw this question back at me. It's like I don't know how to answer that question, so I can ask you know answer this question to why you know our nonprofit why Podbean, why Podbean? Right. and there are a lot of options out there to to consider that are fantastic um, hosting platforms. Uh, namely, I would suggest uh, that if you're looking into this. Use a hosting platform. Don't don't do anything that's free, because free doesn't last. Uh, you're going to lose control of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Podbean worked for us because they do have a nonprofit level per month pay, and ultimately, it really is going to. Uh, you know, I think Podbean right now is maybe at nine dollars a month or something like that as a nonprofit status. Um, I think that fits within any, anybody's nonprofit budget. Of nine dollars a month. To do well, this, and as honestly. I said, we you get a sponsor, right? We have several sponsors of our our podcast programs, and right. people are sort of, you know, in awe of it. And so, Correct. and and we we have also worked those podcast sponsorships in connection to other programs, right? And that has really enhanced all of our sponsorships. Yeah, so. let's dig in a little bit more about because I have a note that I wanted to, to, to expand on the sponsorship piece to that. And and I think the sponsorship um, of a podcast is doable, but I think it does have to be married to other things that right. a nonprofit does right. um, because the numbers are not going to be there initially and may never be there for your podcast to support just truly sponsoring the podcast. It's probably an add-on, a quote-unquote package right. that you do other events, but we're also going to include you as a sponsor of our podcast. Right. I think that's the the, the, the healthiest way of looking at it. Um, just make it something big that they just can't turn down. Right. Uh, well, and um, for instance, I had uh, one of our um, former sponsors and a former board member contact me and said, hey, by the way, I got a little bit of money to spend before the end of the year at the end of June. What do you need? And I'm like, 
cool. This is great. So we put together a multi-event sponsorship for her, which included in, in um, the um, because of the nature of this organization, it focused on hiring. So we made a major sponsor of the career fair coming up. And um, part of that was them providing us with materials that we could give out at the expo for to the client to the participants and you're talking about five to six hundred people as well as publicity but in turn then i said why don't we make you the sponsor of the live stream podcast for that day and as well as bring them also into the 5k which they have sponsored in the past so having a multi-event um sponsorship package for her, took care of her need to spend this money before the end of the year, certainly took care of my need in terms of helping us to enhance the programs that we have. It gets their name out to a lot of people. um, And it it sort of, again, it was a nice little win-win. But bringing in a sponsor for the live stream podcast was new. We had never done, we'd done podcasting in general. But Now they're going to have a special sign there outside your little cubicle to do the podcast and and saying so that that entity will have a nice um, presence at the career fair. That's where you can't discount anything you do in regards to recognize that it's worth something to somebody. And you brought up, too, um, the the email newsletter that you you put out. Um, You have the numbers that are very respectable. That a sponsor with a podcast and doing this and doing you know all the little things that you put together would love to be a part of that email newsletter mm-hmm. that you're reaching x amount of people uh, the, the 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 social media posts uh, all the different things you can put together right. all that put together is strong that you're you're becoming another little piece of marketing for them right as a sponsor right. but ongoing with the podcast series so be creative right well and be and be timely yeah. I, I mean. Had we tried to pull this off when I started at Employment for Seniors in 2009 in the middle of the recession, it wouldn't have worked. Mm-hmm. Um, because it, the, Somebody listening to the podcast, yes. But employers seeing the value, no, because they weren't hiring. So it, it's just time, try to time uh, and utilize what's working really well because in two years that may not. Exactly. Be a possibility. Yeah. But the value of the podcast is regardless of when we tape them, they are going to be good in this economy or in a bad economy. Mm-hmm. We uh, got very creative in what we did with the equipment, um, finding monetary resources. Let's put it that right. way to to up our game. To we, we knew we wanted this to sound good from the, the, the get go. But we also tied it into a lot of different nuances with employing for seniors that it was not just a podcast. And we want to do a podcast. And it's like, great, but what, this did, was, what is that? What right, is that? Right. And, and really, what is your goal with this? So um, I'll, I'll let Carol talk a little bit more about how we gained the the, the, the good equipment that we did get. And oh. I think that's made a huge difference in regards to what we're doing. Uh, I, not Not only in terms of the sound value, but in terms of the look of it. I mean, when somebody comes and sees the equipment we have, they're like, oh, this they really are serious about this. What um, the funding request also did for me was to force me to really think through that this is going to be a serious program. This isn't a one and done. This isn't, I can't afford to buy thousands of dollars of equipment and not really have a plan in place. And so it really did create um, the, uh, help us to create the strategy for the podcasting overall. It kind of started as a joke. I went to one of the um, state agencies and said, hey, by the way, I need some money. And they go, oh, yeah, talk to so-and-so. They have more than we do. (laughs) So I said, oh, I'll see her this afternoon and and sort of as a joke said oh yeah but by the way they said you'd have money to give to me and she just looked at me really seriously and she said you know put a proposal together and and let's talk about this because it sounds kind of interesting good timing we weren't asking for the moon um and it and we did really pull together a a quick and dirty but a, a, a good format for the expectation and because we were already getting funding from this agency, they knew us. They knew we were being successful. They saw how we were going to pull it together within our 
um, other programs and what the potential was. And so they were willing to take the the chance on us, but it really did focus on a training room for older adults. So it's the room per se that got the funding and the room needed this level of equipment. So it included podcasting equipment. We have the coolest smart board from England and got it on a sale, literally, um, and a new um, video camera, new laptop. And then our part of it, what the matched funds, got in the direct internet line, got in um, carpeting, got in lighting, that kind of thing. So it we pulled it all together, and we really do a lot of training in that room. We have been doing um, very successfully um, getting great groups of clients coming in for workshops where we're using the smart board and the laptop. Um, we have the um, – we've expanded our follow-up appointments with clients to do resume reviews and practice interviewing using the video camera. But then, too, then we were able to get the podcast equipment as part of it. All right. And and, and explaining that the podcast is part of training, whether it's right. a one-on-one situation, which right. the podcast is not necessarily – we're you know, having everybody in the conference room and they're listening to a podcast. But the, 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 the conference room is creating a podcast that can be a training tool, is a training tool for any client that – we tell go listen to this specific episode. Go right. listen to this episode, or in just general, I think you know if nothing else, we we've seen that the hiring events become actually a great tool for new listeners to come in to the stream. Right, because right. It's, it's right. yes, it's very specific to a very specific date and time in a hiring event, but then all of a sudden it's it's a great little advertising tool that the podcast does exist. Right. So we're bringing in new listeners with a totally different feel to this podcast with one episode at a time. Right. And and I guess, too, to kind of expand on who our target audiences were for the podcasting, uh, part of our um, stream of the employers that we're talking to employers includes also some of our funding partners because we're talking about issues of aging and how employment fits into that. So we've talked to the age-friendly Columbus folks. We've talked to Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging. We've talked to Franklin County Aid, uh, Office on Aging. The the groups that are um, pivotal to pro- providing us funding, we're, we're going to actually have the Columbus Foundation in this week. They are pivotal to giving us the resources we need to give the resources to our clients. So that's um, part of the beauty of us making the decisions mm-hmm. on our podcast so we can bring in who we'd like who we to talk to. to. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you think the biggest challenges have been with producing the podcast as the executive director, as a, at that time, board member telling you, we have a podcast we're going to do? <laughs> I've been to um, a lot of but, training programs that says, be careful what you ask for. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and of course, I presented it with ideas and, and the concept behind it. And, and you said, yes, that makes total sense. Let's let's explore this more. And we had many, many conversations. But so, you know, beyond the beginning stages of the challenges, <laughs> um, ongoing challenges, what, what would you uh, say have been to keep it going? Uh, I think um, – I mentioned a bit ago that at Employment for Seniors, we have fun every day, but we learn something new every day. We're always telling our clients to learn something new and to let employers know that you're a great job candidate because you are willing to learn. Well, guess what? It was my turn to learn. What is a podcast? What was needed? Um, I'd been doing all types of interviews as the director of Employment for Seniors, but to actually be in charge now of content over and above just my yearly visiting our buddy Mark News at WMNI saying, oh, the job fair is coming, you know, and let's talk about that. So it was a, a learning experience for me, which I have, you know, I'm greatly appreciative of uh, for for Brad holding my hand through the process. And needless to say, you don't give a PhD a mic in an open <laughs> time frame because we just keep talking. Um, so, it, so the first challenge really was, not just to be comfortable in front of a mic, but to keep the conversation rolling. Um, we started from the very beginning to make sure we had topics, and that has continued to be um, 
a challenge, but a good challenge. I don't think we've ever gotten to the point of there's nothing else to say. We've never gotten to that point. Um, we have gotten to the point of making sure that we are scheduling it well, that it makes sense, that it's not a hodgepodge, uh, and that we, it, that it's flowing. But you have to be able to stay fresh. You have to be able to stay on, on the mark of what's relevant. You have to stay factual. Um, I always tell folks, you know, we can fix, we can edit out any mistakes, but we have to make sure we have a content expert who knows what they're talking about. We can't just have somebody come up and spiel stuff. Um, I use the word newsworthy, but you had a better term, and that's evergreen, that the information we're putting out there is going to last. It's going to be useful this year, next year, and probably the year after that. Um, but over and above everything else, I think, too, that to expand it outside of ourselves, that yes, it has to focus on employment for seniors and our clients, but to expand outside of realizing that there are content experts at other agencies, at at employers, at community organizations, at governmental offices, wherever, that there are people out there that we can use and, and um, to keep it interesting, but also um, to realize that uh, job seekers have a lot of questions and, and we're not always going to have all the answers. We have to look for those answers. Right. Yeah. So future plans. I know we've kicked around a couple of ideas, but I, I think it's always good to be thinking – Something What's next? New. What's next? Something I, new. Well, you know, I, I, and kind of going back to the challenges, you, you know, you can plan and plan and plan, but I also think have fun occasionally. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've thrown a couple of episodes together that I just suggested, <laughs> hey, let's let's do like a, a beginning of this year, 2019. Right. I said, let's do like a top nine things you have to do. Exactly. New it's job, one, new job, new year. Right. A couple of years ago. Right. Yeah. And those have been one of the most listened to episodes. Right. In outside of the hiring events. And it really had nothing to do with any tip sheet. Any fact, it just right. is that utilizing top nine, you know, those key phrases, but mm-hmm. having some fun as well. It, w- a little bit of well, work to put together, but we had fun doing those as, as we do with all episodes. Right. I should say that, but um, it's we kind of went off a little bit, right, to, off right. center, and just say, okay, let's just do a top well, there top was, nine list. There was an article in the Columbus Dispatch that you called and said, mm-hmm. let's talk about this. Yeah. And we did it with no research, really. Right. It was just, just our own Just commenting expertise. about the, the, the reality of what that story was about. Right, right. Yeah. So I think um, that this kind of parallels one of the things I talk to clients about when they're doing their job search. They have to look at um, what's posted and apply for those jobs. But to also think of a second path of being creative and thinking about, well, here's where the jobs are posted, but who do I really want to work for and how do I get information and how do I network my way in and how do I find out what their future plans are? So taking that notion and bringing it to the podcast is the same thing. We have to have a plan for the next few months, the next six months, the next year of here are some potential topics. But to also think about, be creative. One of the things we just started um, by just being creative because we had people asking us questions and we were trying to figure out how do we grab those questions and answer them, what is it like to work in? And so we're going to start this series of of conversations. So we've just posted the first one. It's on logistics. Mm -hmm. We're going to do one on – I'm calling it personal transportation. I'm not really sure that's the correct term. But we're going to talk to people who are in different kinds of transportation areas and pull together a a podcast on, you know, I've been a mailman all my life. I love to drive. It's okay. I don't mind it. So here's a place to go become a limo driver on your own schedule – your own time um, with somebody else's car um, and have fun with people because they're going to a party kind of thing. Um, So we're going to be putting some time and effort into that. Um, Again, I said there are some things, some topics that we haven't found our content experts, so we'll continue to look for those. I want to think of other creative ways to utilize the podcast to better enhance our other programs but also what resources we have in place to better emphasize the podcast. So again, we're starting to add it into our mass emails. Are there other kinds of things that we could do besides 
just posting it up there on on um, Facebook, getting reactions from people or something, something mm-hmm. along that line. So um, I think there are lots of things that we can do. Um, we're just going to be creative. All right. So what, what – uh, some advice for a nonprofit that's kind of taking a look at this, uh, kicking the tires, going, OK, you guys, you got me convinced. I've listened to the last – half hour, 45 minutes, however long this podcast is going to be, right. and I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I can do this. What would be some advice to get started and, and to keep going? Well, as I mentioned, Employment for Seniors is a little group, um, but that doesn't mean that we don't have idea people, people with ideas. Um, I can only pull out so many tricks up, up my sleeve, but we just ask people what they're looking at, what they need information on, what... Um, would be interesting to listen to if they're willing to also help. I have a counselor who wants to do a podcast, but we haven't quite figured out what topic she wants to talk about. And um, so I, I, you have to have ideas. You've got right. to have a plan and have ideas. You just cannot pull this out of thin air. It's right. uh, it's not going to all necessarily flow together. So we've been really, really lucky with that. But I also have a marketing plan. I think that we had a basic one yeah, yeah. and we probably could have had more of a plan, but I'm not sure it would have made any difference at the end. But you do have to have a plan on how you're going to get the information out. It's no use putting all this time, cost, resources into it if nobody's listening. And um, make sure you really want to do it. This is not a one and done issue. Um, you can't have a podcast program and only be up there for a couple of months. You have to be willing and really commit to doing it. Um, get your if you're a nonprofit, get your board on board. Um, get those folks ready and realize that they can um, make it a win win for themselves. Not just that um, they are going to allow you to do it, but they're yeah. willing to jump in. Both feet. Yeah, I don't think – I think up to this point now we have gotten almost every board member on a podcast. Mm-hmm. And I, in one form or another. In one form or another. Yeah. And I wouldn't have thought that 18 months ago that we could right. have – Right, right. That was number one. It was a goal. I don't think it ever was, but it just – we started to look at the makeup of the board going, hey, we could talk – a couple of them we would have never thought to bring on, but all of a sudden they have a story to tell mm-hmm. about their transition. As career like, changers, right? And it's like, all right. Right. Let's bring them on. Right. We've had career changers from board members. We've had our content expert on Mm -hmm. the local economy. We have had um, HR experts talk about what makes a good candidate. So, yeah, I think we've pretty much pulled everybody in. Yeah, which is nice because they get to know what this is all about. Right. Well, and it helps me as the executive director because then they can see what I'm putting my time into too. So. Sure, exactly. Other than hearing me report about it and they get tired of that. <laughs> yes, we we do inundate them with numbers. That's for sure. So, so they know, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for making this happen. I know, I, I my, like I said, I wanted to make sure that we got to record an episode to talk about how this started, why I think it's important for nonprofits to really consider doing a podcast and some nuances of how we did it. Their story is going to be totally different than ours on how right. they get started, but I think there's valid reason to really consider doing a podcast as a nonprofit because you'll be surprised who you can get on there, the dollars that can follow to help support it, as well as people inside the organization, whether it be a board member, volunteers, or whatever, that probably will raise their hand quickly to be a part of it if it's done properly. The right. focus is there and um, you have a game plan. Right. Absolutely. And I think, too, you, you've you offered your assistance to groups, and, and I'm more than happy to talk to organizations mm-hmm. about what we did and how we did it and why we did it and has it really been worth it. And I, I, I do have to say it's not only not it, – it's not only completely worth it and worth the time, um, but it truly does give you a sense of awe – and kind of a bit of zeal to mm-hmm. really get excited about what you're doing and what you're providing and how you can get your message across and and know that somebody out there is listening. All right. Exactly. Well, again, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's wonderful. Now, do I get to put this on my website, too? Sure. Why not? Absolutely. <laughs> one more. One more Share. down. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Podcasting allows you to tell a story, your story. Your business's story is what separates you from your competition. It shapes your past 
present, and future. Adding podcasting to your marketing mix allows you to tell your story with more power than in text alone. Your company can also use podcasts to grow your network. Many podcast shows and episodes revolve around having guests in an interview or conversation. This format allows your company to develop influential relationships with thought leaders in the industry and keeps the podcast interesting. The best part, podcasts fit perfectly into our tight attention economy. We live in an age of information overload, where attention has become the most valuable business currency. Podcasting allows people to multitask as they consume the content, making podcasting easy to incorporate into their daily habits. For more information about Circle 270 Media Podcast Consultants and how we can help your business begin or better implement your current podcast into your marketing strategy, contact me at podcasts at circle270media.com.